I know it's here somewhere. Finally, finally. Oh, it's time for the duck. You're listening to Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. Ah, oh, take it away, doctor. Well, it's that time again, and the doctor is in. It's time for another Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon netcast. And I trust... That once again, you're having a fun time with your tech. I've been playing with my tech lately. <laughs> As you can probably tell, I've been all geeking out here on the cameras and the setup and the lighting. I'm still... It's a work in progress, you know what I'm saying? Matter of fact, let me just transition over to this camera here. I'll spin around here where I can look into that camera. Notice the... Uh, the camera here that you can see that I'm pointing to in the foreground... <laughs> that is the camera that is the main shot camera, you might say. And um, <laughs> I've got it mounted on a very interesting mount that is basically a microphone gooseneck with an adapter on the end. And that adapter allows me to mount the camera. So that's kind of cool. But it uh, gives you a little different perspective on things. Now if I switch over here back to the main shot, <laughs> I can get back where I should be in the universe. Anyway, uh, you got to love it. You know, it's hard to see the uh, controls with all the junk I've got on my desk. That's why I keep craning my neck around and looking at things. We are proud members of the Tech Podcast Network. Techpodcast.com. If it's tech, it's right here on Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon. You're just enjoying the geek out stuff with me as I play with my tech. Yes. See, I gotta figure out how to find the controls that I need to use without so obviously craning my neck around looking for them. <sighs> anyway, uh, you know, there's all kinds of things you can do here with these cameras, and I've been playing with that. Uh, not the least of which is the color balance and the saturation and the other things. Yes. Now, some of you I know are really into all the uh, geekiness of of doing a program, and uh, it, it believe me, it's not as simple as it looks. But anyway, let's get into the blog, shall we? Of course, the blog being drbill.tv, D-R-B-I-L-L dot TV, as it says there on the bottom of the screen, as usual. And uh, we got some very different things this week. This is a strange week on the blog, but I just, you know, I was in an odd mood all week long, and so I blogged weird things. Some of them were computer curmudgeonly things, such as the fact that people over 55 may be safer online. Now, I myself am over 55. Yes, you knew that. <laughs> you know, just, just barely, I'm 56. Just barely. Anyway, it says that people over 55 may be safer online because they choose more difficult passwords. Now, let me say this. The word password, all lowercase, not such a good password. Know what I'm saying? But it seems that the Gen Y folks, that would be the generation roughly the age of the Game Master... Basically, those that are in their 20s. He's not quite in his 20s yet. He's 19. He will be 20 soon. But anyway, let's just say those in their 20s, uh, the Gen Wires, basically, they don't have passwords that are nearly as safe as us bogeys. <laughs> so we're safer online. Now, granted, we've got more to protect online, I would assume, because those of us from our generation tend to have more moolah than those from Gen Y, mainly because they haven't made their mark yet. Some have, but most have not. Know what I'm saying? Anyway, next item. Next item was just fun. Just general geek culture oddness. I was looking online and I found a picture of Albert Einstein playing the electric guitar. Now, the thing is, I don't know that Albert Einstein actually really played the electric guitar, but it looks so cool. 
that I couldn't help it. It's probably been Photoshop. They probably stuck his head on a dude playing a PV guitar. I don't think that PV equipment existed when Einstein was around. So I'm relatively certain that it's just a Photoshop. But boy, does it look cool. So I couldn't help posting it under the title of Einstein Rocks. <laughs> I always suspected that he did, and now I have proof. <laughs> As you can see from the picture that I put up here, it actually looks very cool. Even though it's probably bogus. Eh, oh well. Anyway, Google buys Quick Office. Yes, Quick Office that you use on your mobile phones and handhelds and things of that nature. That's out there, you know, it's fairly inexpensive if even if you buy the Pro version. Uh, but at any rate, it's a, it's a pretty neat little office, you know, for mobile devices. But uh, Google purchased them. And uh, the, the writer of the article said that he thought it was for the upcoming battle uh, to basically bridge the thinness of Google Apps uh, by adding Quick Office to it uh, as, as an additional functionality, you might say, uh, because of the upcoming Microsoft Windows 8 technology metro wars that are liable to come once they hit the mobile devices with that particular paradigm. You know what I'm saying? So, who knows? We'll see how that works out. Next item, Ray Bradbury died this past week at 91. Now, I, I found it odd on a couple levels. First of all, Ray Bradbury, of course, wrote Fahrenheit 451, which is the temperature at which paper burns. And, of course, it was uh, a science fiction story about book burning. Um, he also wrote The Martian Chronicles, lots of different things. I've read some Bray Bradbury. He wasn't my, like, absolute favorite science fiction author, but he was certainly a, uh, a force in the industry. Let's put it that way. And so uh, it, what w was really weird to me, though, was I found out he was born in 1920, which is the year that my dad was born. So he was roughly the same age as my dad was, and uh, uh, Ray Bradbury, of course, 91 when he passed away. Pretty amazing. There were a lot of tributes to him this week on the web, and you can go find those. And there, you know, some of them are fairly touching tributes to Ray Bradbury. So pretty neat stuff. All right, this was posted on June the 6th, and it says, Last night, IPTV went live on the backbone of the Internet. IPv6, IPv TV is not what I, I didn't mean to say that. IPv6. <laughs> we are currently running IPv4, most people. That's the four octets, like 192.168.10.1. That, that would be a typical IPv4 address. And then, of course, there's IPv6. Now, the main thing about IPv6 is, is you notice at the end of my show, I have a little... Uh, little card that goes up that says there's no place like 120.0.0.1 okay and that's because 120.0.0.1 represents home home get it your own computer so therefore there's no place like home got it okay well anyway in IPv6 it would be there's no place like colon colon one simpler <laughs> But the whole idea is, is that with IPv6, you can have a literal, unique IP address for 40, uh, wait a minute, 340 trillion, trillion, trillion addresses. Or as I pointed out once before, every molecule in the solar system could have its own address. Every molecule <laughs> not every device not every person every molecule that's a ton o addresses not likely to be running out of them anytime soon know what i'm saying wow as opposed to ipv4 which had 4.3 billion eh. and we're already running out basically of those so that's why ipv6 is such a big deal but anyway, internet service providers like AT&T, Cisco, Comcast, Facebook, Google, Microsoft, Times Company, uh, parent company Time Warner, 
Uh, they all enabled IPv6 permanently on their hardware on World IPv6 Day, which, uh, well, no, World IPv6 Day occurred a year ago, June 8th, 2011, when the providers turned on IPv6 for a single day, basically symbolically. Well, this time they turned it on for real, okay? So it went live. Wow. Cool. Anyway, next item. 8 million passwords have been exposed from LinkedIn and possibly eHarmony. Now they said a you know dating site and some people thought it was probably eHarmony. So to be on the safe side you should change your password if you have a LinkedIn or eHarmony or any dating site account. Now as I point out I don't need a dating account. I'm happily married. <laughs> So I don't need one, but I did have a I do have a LinkedIn account, so I changed that password. So I encourage you to do that, okay? And you know, you need to tell your friends that they need to do that. And here's how you could do that. This is just an idea. You could use go to meeting with HD faces, have a meeting, and tell people they need to change their passwords. You can collaborate. You can join people across the world using GoToMeeting with HD Faces. Have an HD 16 by 9 web context from which to uh, use the GoToMeeting software. And we have a 30-day free trial of GoToMeeting available. And I'm telling you, you need to take advantage of it. So go right now to go to meeting.com enter the code word podcast and do it now go ahead just you know you can pause this video and you can go and get a 30-day free trial of go to meeting right now it'll help out the tech podcast network it'll help out the dr bill.tv show and it will be good for you because you'll have an excellent tool with which to tell your friends to change their passwords good idea Use the technology you have at hand to help them. Okay, so 8 million passwords exposed. Dude, Ugh. it's pretty rough. I'm telling you, security is getting to be a big deal out there in the interwebs. All right. No. Oh. <sighs> yes. Geek Software of the Week. Geek Software of the Week this week is Directory Pass. We've been talking so much about security, I decided to throw in a security-oriented... Geek Software of the Week. So there. <laughs> anyway, uh, basically this allows you to secure a directory on your web server. If you have a web server, and a lot of people have websites these days, then you can use the .htaccess file to secure a directory and require a password. And uh, what Directory Pass does is, is get you out of all of that mucking around in the code and allows you to use a graphical web-based screen to uh, set up a password on a directory. So cool stuff. You ought to use that. It's good, good stuff, I'm telling you. So Geek Software of the Week this week is almost, I wondered about making it a Linux one, but you can use Apache with Windows and, and use .htaccess files. So I just left it a general Geek Software of the Week uh, entry. So there. Okay, I predicted last week that Microsoft would wimp out of the IE10 do not track default setting, and they did. Yeah, I just know these things. I know my Microsoft. Yes, they're lame. <laughs> they have no backbone. They're not leaders anymore. I remember a day when they were leaders in the industry. Now they're just kind of eh, meh. Know what I'm saying? Anyway, they wimped out on Do Not Track. And uh, basically, the Do Not Track proposal changed, and they said, oh, okay, well, that, that'll give us an excuse to, uh, to not use it. Because <laughs> they were getting a lot of flack. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Anyway, next item fits in well with the whole idea of Microsoft bashing. <laughs> as long as you're going to bash Microsoft... <laughs> Why don't you go ahead and use a real operating system, Linux? Yes. You know, I'm a big Linux proponent. 
I love my Linux and I use Ubuntu Linux on my laptop which is my primary computer and I'm telling you I love it and I've got a video here reasons to love Ubuntu 12.04 LTS that's long-term support as I've said before and so check this video out I have it linked within my blog drbill.tv uh, or you can go out to the good old YouTube and look for reasons to love Ubuntu and that will take you to the video watch it it's got all kinds of pretty music and everything <laughs> but it also shows you the features the new features of the heads-up display HUD heads-up display in Ubuntu unity interface and uh, how it's much easier to search for things even the features within software so like for instance if you want to how, to how to use layers within the GIMP and you've got the GIMP up you can go to the heads up display type HUD or not HUD go to the HUD and type layers <laughs> yes and <laughs> type HUD that won't work I mean unless you're looking up how to use HUD but anyway type layers and it will show you how to use layers in the GIMP it'll bring up the GIMP help for layers isn't that cool that's cool it's all it's all searchable and graphical and things of that nature so check it out it's a neat video okay and hopefully we've given you insight into the program this week how we're doing the cameras and the things and the and all the other stuff and I hope you enjoyed it and remember until next time that the doctor is out of here Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon is a production of DrBillBailey.net with all the honors, rights, and privileges thereunto appertaining.